show. Anyway, um, so this is, one, this is one of my favorite passages in the book. Hold on for a second. Um, I, I thought I marked it, but... The Wilmina Johns is having this conversation uh, with P.S. Garrett, and she basically says that, I know we have children here, so I'm going to do this politely, uh, but she says that she can tell how a man is in bed based on the way he walks. And P.S. Garrett is like, oh, heck no. And she says, no, you know, you can. And she gives her this, this tutorial on how you can tell by the way a guy walks. Now watch, when the guys get up, all the girls are going to watch. Um, anyway, so uh, well, Lena has to drop her car off at the car dealership, and uh, they're on their way home from the car dealership. P.S. is giving her a ride, and that's where, we, uh, that's where we pick up the story. On the way home from the car dealership, a beat-up old car stood up from behind, uh-oh, virgin. Just kidding, sir. Okay, anyway. Uh, on the way home from the car dealership, a beat-up old car sped up from behind them, passed recklessly on the left, and nearly ran the two women off the road. P.S. was driving and swerved onto the shoulder and then back onto the street in front of the vehicle to keep her car from rolling into a ditch. It took P.S. a few seconds to recover as she pulled back into the roadway. Next, the driver started speeding up and hitting his brakes as he got inches away from her back bumper, basically menacing and tailgating. That creep! P.S. screamed as she opened her sunroof, stuck up her hand, and flicked him the finger. The driver went berserk. He started honking his horn and screaming. He then crossed the solid yellow line, barely missing a car on the left, to get in front of the two women. He kept slowing down and then hitting his brakes, trying to get them to run into him. The whole time he was yelling and shaking his fist in his rearview mirror. What is that idiot doing, P.S. asked, becoming concerned. He almost ran us off the road. She reached back, uh, back to grab her purse that was sitting on the floor behind her but couldn't get a hold of it. Will, grab your cell phone. That's Valina. Call 911. Valina rummaged around in her purse for a second. Oh, I left it in my hands free unit in the car. Well, grab my purse and get mine. But Walina was whiplashed into the dashboard as Pia slammed on the brakes. The idiot in front of them had come to a complete stop in the middle of the road. Then the nut got out of his car and stormed toward them, gesturing wildly, holding what looked to be a tire iron. He took huge strides and his entire body leaned forward as he charged the little red sports car. P.S. was terrified. She couldn't back up because there was a car behind her. She couldn't pull off on the right because of the sidewalk. And there was oncoming traffic to her left. What is this guy doing? Pia said, her voice quaking as the angry motorist got closer to her vehicle. Melina said nothing. She just watched the approaching maniac with amused curiosity. When he got about 15 feet from the vehicle, Will reached over and pushed the button that slid the sunroof completely back. She then calmly pulled a pistol from her purse, stood up in her seat so that her upper body was up through the open sunroof, pointed the gun at the approaching motorist, and calmly said, Back off, MF. As Will leveled the gun at the approaching motorist, the vehicle directly behind them, and then another screeched tires as they pulled out into oncoming traffic to pass them in order to distance themselves from the fray. The approaching madman stopped dead in his tracks. His face turned red with anger, and he yelled, You stupid! Did you call me a... Will said, finally getting angry. You know I could shoot you right now for that and be justified. I won't even spend any time in jail. They'll say it was temporary insanity or justifiable homicide. And what do you know about it anyway? You are threatening me. I can blow you around right now in self-defense. In fact, I think I will. <laughs> well, Lena steadied her arms, lowered her head, and gently placed her left eye at the head of the sight lines of the pistol. She took a deep breath, exhaled with a sigh, and pulled the hammer back on the gun. Pia shuddered. Her face contorted in utter, in utter shock. She was speechless. I'm a reporter, she said. I report this kind of crap. It doesn't happen to me. As horrifying as the scene was, what Will said made sense. The man was threatening them. And if Will did pull the trigger, the trigger it would be in self-defense. But P.S. dreaded the thought. A dead motorist in the middle of Squirrel Road, Molina blowing away the smoke from the barrel of her pistol with calm bravado. The police would be questioning the two women on the side of the road as the medical examiner pulled the sheet over the cold body that was beginning to attract flies, and the TV cameras, oh my God, the TV cameras, P.S. shuddered. Please don't, please don't, P.S. pleaded. Why not? He's threatening us. 
Why are you pleading for his life? He's the one who should be pleading. And then she steadied her aim at a jerk and realized, this guy realized he picked the wrong women to harass. When Lena continued to lecture the creep, who slowly raised his hands up in the air and was standing in front of the car with his knees wobbling. Pull off, quick! So the car pulls off. They ride up a, a one-way street, down another one-way street, and they finally get away from this guy. P.S. took ten deep breaths and swallowed a gallon of saliva and looked at Will in both relief and anger. Silence. I wouldn't have shot him, you know. Will finally blurted. Oh, the reporter said. That's not what it looked like back there. I couldn't, even if I wanted to. And why not, P.S. asked. You look like you knew what you were doing. Melina turned the gun over in her hands and began to laugh. Because I don't have any darts for it. She handed her friend the gun. It was a plastic toy. On close inspection, it barely resembled a real gun at all. P.S. looked at Melina, the gun, and back to Melina again. You mean to tell me you just backed off some lunatic with an empty dart gun? <laughs> yep, she said proudly, putting the toy back into her purse. P.S. didn't know whether to laugh or scream. She wasn't sure if Will had endangered their lives or saved them. Adrenaline was coursing through her veins. She could hear her heart pounding in her head, and her hands were shaking. They went rat tat 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 on the steering wheel. P.S. Garrett then slowly pulled herself together and backed out of the parking lot and headed toward Melina's condo. She was afraid to look in the rearview mirror for fear that she would see that her hair had turned gray and that she had aged 15 years in the last 10 minutes. Will didn't say a word for the first mile or so, and then she quietly said as if she were really thinking out loud to herself, he wouldn't have done anything anyway. He didn't have the confidence. Did you see how he walked? He can't even screw. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Was that clean for the kids?